Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I'm down here at the bench and uh, I just got a package dropped off to me. And this came all the way from the United Kingdom, courtesy of Mr. John Hudson, G4ABQ. He's uh, one, of the, uh, one of the two guys in charge of, or creator of, SDR Play. So you know what's in here. That's right. Let's open this up. I'm excited. John said uh, he'd be happy to send me a review unit, and he just had one request. He likes my Linux videos for hams, and he would like me to do a step-by-step -step setup video for the SDR Play RSP2. This is the new model. This is the one that has three antenna inputs and can go all the way down to one kilohertz and all the way up to two gigahertz. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you step by step how to set this guy up under Linux. So let's go up to the computer and uh, we'll get it set up. Terminal forecast. Terminal forecast. Halifax. Halifax. No report received. Great. Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. As you can see, up there, up there, I don't know which way it is. <laughs> Cubic SDR is running with my loner unit, um, SDR Play. Okay, let me mute that. So, after a lot of work, and I mean a lot of digging, a lot of experimenting, a lot of poking around, reading a lot of forums, <laughs> I have found uh, build instructions mostly uh, from a forum post here and there, and I've put them all together, and I've tested them, and I've tried them out, and I have come up with a mostly automated installation for the SDR Play for Linux, for Ubuntu 16.04 all of its derivatives, Zubuntu, um, Mint, any of those, um, and even Debian. Uh, I've, I've installed it as a test on Debian 8, on a raw Debian 8 install, and it worked. So I have, uh, I've gelled it all down to two scripts that you can run that will do all the software installing, build all the packages, the frameworks, and the back-end modules that are needed, and then build Cubic SDR, the current version, 0.2.2, .2, which also includes support for the added features on the SDR Play RSP2, which is kind of cool. Um, have a look up here at Cubic. It's, uh, it's running right now on the SDR Play. And if I come up here to Settings, down here we can choose um, whether we're using the Hi-Z port or Antenna AB ports, and we can choose which of those two ports we're using. So we can choose the antennas. RF Notch Enable turns on their um, broadcast medium wave and FM notch filters, which is actually kind of useful. Uh, I have a, uh, an AM broadcast station a couple of miles away. It's a low power station, but it still kind of overloads the front end of a lot of receivers, including the SDR Play. So I can turn that on and cut down on the interference when it's uh, bad, or if I'm using too big of an antenna. <laughs> if I had it hooked up to my external uh, NFED wire, um, I probably would have to build an external notch filter for the AM broadcast band because there's just that much RF in the air. But you can turn the uh, SDR Plays notch filter on here, which is kind of neat. Uh, BIAS-T enable turns on the uh, BIAS voltage on the secondary antenna jack, so you could power um, like an active antenna with it. That's kind of cool. And external ref enable enables that uh, external reference input jack on the back of the SDR Play 2. So all the features of the RSP2 are supported in this version of Cubic, which is really cool. So once you go through my, and run my scripts, you'll not only have your SDR Play RSP2 working, but you'll have access to the additional features with this current version of Cubic. Now, I have not been able to get GQRX to work yet, but and I'll work on that, and if I come up with a solution there, which I'm sure it's something simple, I'm probably just have to build one more thing. Um, 
I'll uh, post that in a future video. But for now, Cubic fits the bill well enough. It provides most of the functionality you're going to want uh, to play around with your SDR play. So let's take a look at what we have to do. Okay, um, you're going to have to go to their site and download their binary drivers. So if we look over here, I've got the page open, uh, sdrplay.com slash downloads. And um, if you go up here and you click on Linux, you'll find this hardware driver version 2.10, which is what it is now. It might be something uh, higher by the time you're seeing this video. But you're going to want to download that file. Now, my scripts will run in any directory, but just for clarity's sake, um, what I would do just to keep it consistent is on your desktop, create a folder called SDR Play. And then inside of there, download the uh, API hardware driver from the SDR Play site. That's this file here, SDR Play RSP API Linux 2.10.1.run. Okay, that's a, a shell script, but we need to make it executable. So what you'll do is you'll right click on it after you've downloaded it and you'll go to properties and in the properties window under permissions you'll want to check this box to allow executing files as program. All right, That makes it executable. Um, I will hopefully have my scripts hosted and linked to my blog where I detail all of this. The blog entry is linked below in the description so if you go there you'll find a very wordy step-by-step -step description of what to do to run these scripts uh, as well as the scripts themselves in text format so if I don't have this um, compressed file of these scripts hosted yet you can go down to the bottom of the blog entry and you can highlight each script copy it paste it into an editor and then save it into this directory as a file so you can do it that way to get the scripts now hopefully in a day or two I will have this uh, this zip file or this tar file uh, hosted and you'll just be able to click a link and download it and extract it into the directory. So these also need to be executable. If they're if you're extracting them out of this uh, tar file, they will be executable. You can't run them from uh, the desktop though. You have to run them from the terminal. Okay, so you're going to need to uh, go and launch a terminal. And in that terminal, you're going to change into that directory that you just created, cd tilde, which means my home directory, slash desktop, which is with a capital D, slash, and the name of the directory you created, SDR play. Now you can see that there are the files and I'm in that directory. And if I wanted to run one of those files, um, you need to run them as root. What they're going to do is the first script, I'll just show you. Um, let me open it with an editor here. I'll just show you. Um, they're not going to do anything nefarious to your system. <laughs> but you can open them and, and read through them if you want to be sure. Uh, and I've commented them all through um, with what we do. First, we install needed dependencies. And this runs a couple of app get installs to make sure we've got build tools, the build environment, various libraries that we're going to need. If you're on Debian 8, you'll need to uncomment these two lines here. Take those hashes out so that these two lines will run as well to get the OpenGL drivers and libraries installed. And then we go in and we clone a bunch of uh, GitHub projects for SOAPY SDR, Liquid DSP, and Cubic. See, we're going to build all of these. So that's what these scripts are going to do. They're going to compile all these, these programs for you. Right? So all you have to do is run the script. It's going to handle the rest. Um, I tried to make it easy for you. So you're in this window. What you would do is you would, to run it as root, sudo dot slash, which means the current directory, and then the name of the script install underscore script pt1.sh okay and when and when you hit enter it's going to ask you for your password because it needs to run that as root and then it's going to go through and a whole bunch of stuff is going to fly by as it downloads the various repositories installs um, the build environment it might ask you on those installs uh, you know it's going to say I'm going to install all these files is that okay and you have to hit a Y hit yes uh, so that script's going to run for a little while because it's going to build Liquid DSP, WX widgets, um, and it's going to use GitHub to get the repositories for the rest of the software, Cubic, 
SOAP SDR, which is the framework that goes between Cubic and the hardware, um, it's going to pull all that stuff down. When that script finishes, it'll say in the, in the shell, okay, now you need to run the uh, driver you downloaded from the SDR play site. And you'll do that the same way, sudo dot slash and the name of the file you downloaded from their site. All right. Right now it says uh, SDR play underscore RSP API Linux 2.10.1 dot run. That number is probably going to change um, as they update the library. So I could not include that in the script. That's why you have to do this separately in the script is in two parts. So you'll run that right and uh, copy. I'll just run it here. It takes you through a license agreement that you page through and then it asks, you know, are you, do you accept the agreement? And you say yes. And when you say yes, it will install the library files. After that is done, then we run the second script, right? And uh, you do that with, where is it? Hmm, thought I saved it. Sudo dot slash install underscore script. Dash pt two dot sh. It'll ask you for your password again, um, and then it will go through and it will finish building SOAPY SDR, which is the framework, the SOAPY SDR plugin that allows it to talk to the SDR play. Um, something else. <laughs> And then it'll build Cubic, the newest version of Cubic. Now it's pulling Cubic SDR from the author's repository. So at, at this point in time, it's version 0.2.2 .2 with the added support for the, SD, for the RSP2. Um, down the road, as he updates that software and releases newer versions, when you run the script, uh, you'll be getting the current version. So you'll get the most up-to-date version of it when you run this. After this script is done, Okay, the software will be built and Cubic will be installed. Now, it does not create a menu automatically. Okay, so if you are running the Mate desktop or um, XFCE or some other desktop, you'll have to come up here and right click to edit menus and go into whatever menu you want it in. And I've already created it here, but you can say new item, uh, create an item, name it Cubic SDR, command. Cubic SDR, uh, it puts the percent U in there. You don't have to, just, just the command. And that's a capital C and a capital SDR. So that's important. And that's all you have to do to create an item for your menu. So after you've created that, when you go and you select that menu item, Cubic SDR is gonna run. Um, make sure that your SDR play was not plugged in while you were running my scripts. If it was, Unplug it for a few seconds and then plug it back in before running Cubic, okay? Uh, it has to re-recognize it. But when you do, what you should see is Cubic comes up and it shows you what local devices it found and you should see SDR Play right there. And you just click it and you hit start and there we go. We are I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> oh, I'm on, uh, okay, I'm on 20 meters. Let's go to upper sideband. I hope you can hear that or not. That's 20 meters. So uh, Cubic SDR, it's a, quite a cool program. It's got lots, a lot of features, lots of capability in it. Um, I think that it's a, a pretty good match. It's not quite as feature complete as SDR Uno, but it has a lot of the same features. It's a pretty easy program to use. I think you'll enjoy it. So there you go. Um, follow through and run those two scripts and you'll have your SDR play working under Linux. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.